right, so welcome back to another episode on the Eldorado Project. If you guys saw last week's episode, we covered the front tire, getting those rotors installed, getting those new brake pads put in. So in this episode, we're gonna cover the rear tire as far as getting it removed, getting it balanced, and getting these new rotors and brake pads installed. So I am on a lift, so I'm gonna use a scissor jack to raise the rear of the bike up, just enough to get tension off the shocks. So to get the tire out, you have your axle, you have your shocks, you have your belt. All of this has to come off. Now the shocks don't have to come completely off, but because I am replacing them with the Russ Wearmont Designs RS1 shocks, I'm just gonna go ahead and take them completely off. But if you're not replacing your shocks, you just need to remove this bottom bolt, swing it back, and just zip tie to here so it's not slapping around, and then we'll be able to access this axle once we drop the bike down. So I'll cover up my exhaust first so I don't scratch anything up. I'll remove this bottom bolt first, and then I'll take out the top. Just make sure you have a hold of your shock so it's not slapping around. It's gonna be the same thing on the right side. You have two bolts, and they're a three quarter inch socket. Even if you're not changing out your suspension, I would go ahead and thread chase these holes and apply some new Loctite. Now before I lower the bike, I'll get this brake caliper off. You have this clip right here. So I'll use a plastic prying tool to pop out this Christmas tree retaining clip. Now you can leave this retaining clip on if you want. It just locks the cables down like this. But I go ahead and just pop it out. You have another clip right here. Just hold your wheel speed sensor and your brake caliper line together. I'll pop that off. So here you have your rear brake caliper. It is missing the screen because I am getting it painted. You have these two screws that I'm mounting it onto the rear brake caliper mounting bracket. And to get these two screws out, I'm using a 516 hex bit. I'll go ahead and take the caliper off, just slide it up, and I'll put it inside of a bag so it's not scratching anything up. Now you can also zip tie this to the frame so it's not hanging off the brake line. Now I'll slowly lower the bike. You'll see that swing arm come up. It'll give me more access to the axle. So with the axle assembly, you have your E-clip, your cone nut, and adjuster cam on the right side. You also have an adjuster cam on the left side along with a weld nut. And then I made two markings on the boss. This is your boss right here. That way, when I go to reinstall it, it's just gonna make it a little easier to line everything back up. Now it does say to replace your E-clip, but this one is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and reuse it. So I'm using a 36 millimeter socket to remove the cone nut. Now I'll knock this axle through. So I'll pull this out the rest of the way. You have one spacer right here, just keep track of that. So here you have your caliper bracket and your wheel speed sensor. Just kind of work that out. So when you go to remount your wheel speed sensor, it mounts just like this. You have this little indentation here. That's where this is gonna sit, just like that. So when you go to remount it, just make sure you remount it the same way. So I'll remount the right side shock just to get the swing arm out of the way. Now I'll raise the rear of the bike so I can work the tire out. I'll work the tire forward and get this belt off. Now when you're taking your tire out, just make sure you're holding onto your sprocket so it doesn't fall. Now that I have everything removed, I'll raise the rear of the bike so I can work the tire out.
All right, so here I have the rear tire. You have your sprocket on this side, you have your rotor on the other side. So I'll go ahead and take the sprocket off. Now with your sprocket, you wanna inspect all the teeth. You wanna inspect the bearings on the inside, as well as the spacer. You wanna check your tabs, make sure nothing is cracked or fractured. So I will be replacing this stock isolator with the Super Cush Cush Drive. It's polyurethane, helps absorb the changes in torque and gives you a smoother ride. Now, if you are keeping your stock isolator, which I highly recommend, you just replace it anytime you take this off, but you wanna clean it up with half water and half isopropyl alcohol. Uh, just read your service manual, it'll tell you exactly what mixture you need to clean this all up. But I would also mark it exactly where you took it out. That way you put it back in the exact same spot. You also wanna inspect inside of here, check your fingers, check in all the gaps, make sure nothing's cracked, everything's good to go. You also wanna inspect your bearings. I'll clean those out and I'll also apply some new anises. Now I'll flip this over and take the rotor off. On the stock rotor, you do have a wear indicator, just lets you know what the minimum width is. So to take these screws out, I'm using a T45. Here I have the rear rotor. They do have an install guide on the back in case you had any other questions. Now, before I mount the rotors, I will clean them off. A lot of times these rotors are packaged with a protective film. If it has any packaging grease or anything like that, you wanna make sure you get all that off. Now on a service note, with anything that involves Loctite on your bike, which is 99% of it, you definitely wanna thread chase your holes. So here I have the rear rotor, same thing. You have that coil on the back. I'll get the rotor on, I'll line up my holes. Now if your rotor is designed to match up with your wheels, make sure you orientate it so it matches up with the wheel. So here I have the gold titanium rotor bolts. So there is a noticeable size difference for the front screws and the rear screws. So you can't really mix them up. The front screws are smaller and the rear screws are bigger. I'll install these new titanium screws and I'm also using red Loctite. And then when you go to put your screws in, you wanna tighten them down in a star pattern and then you also wanna torque them down in a star pattern. So to tighten these screws down, I'm using a quarter inch hex bit. Now the torque value for these screws is 15 to 18 foot pounds. Now I'll throw the wheel onto the balancer just to check the balance and the rotor. Now before you check the balance, just make sure you have the sprocket and the isolator removed. All right, so I have the wheel on the Bike Master truing stand or wheel balancer. Uh, it's been sitting here for a while. I did spin it a couple of times to see where the heaviest point was. So right now it's set at the heaviest point and it has the valve stem directly on the top. So what I'll do now is just remove these old wheel weights just to get this perfectly balanced, brand new and set because we do have a new rotor on there and everything else. So we'll go ahead and get these old wheel weights off. We'll add some new ones and then we'll go from there. I'll go ahead and clean this tire off before I mount any new wheel weights. All right, so from here, I'm gonna check the rotor. I'll check it visually, and I'll also use this dowel indicator just to check the run out. So now I'll just let it spin until it's at its heaviest point.
All right, so I have the wheel cleaned up. I have the old wheel weights off. Now sometimes you can get lucky and those wheel weights will be spot on, but in this case, they were a little off. So make sure it's all cleaned off. You have that sprocket off, get that isolator out of there. I spun it a couple times just to make sure that there was nothing wrong with the rotor. Everything is true. So the heaviest point right now is set. So what I wanna do is mark that just so I remember where the heaviest point is. And then I'm just gonna follow that straight up. And this is where I wanna add some wheel weights. I'll start with two for now. I'll see where it's at. And then if I need to add one, I'll make sure I add a full strip. I don't wanna add two and then one by itself, those can fall off. So what I'll do is I'll break this up into four. I'll turn it about a quarter of a ways. See where it's at. You see that it still wants to spin. So that heavier side is coming straight down. So that's obviously not enough. So once again, here, the heaviest spot was here. It wants to spin all the way back down. So that obviously is not enough weight. I come back this way and it's gonna wanna spin that way. So we'll add some more weight. Two wasn't enough. So I'll add two more right here. Now you can always split these up, put two on one side and two on the other. But right now I just wanna see how many weights we need. So I'll spin it, quarter of a ways. That's a little bit better, but obviously you can see that it still wants to spin back this way. I'll turn it this way, and it's probably gonna wanna spin the other way. So I'll add more weights, but I'll put them on the other side. I got four on this side and two on the other side, so a total of six wheel weights. So I'll go ahead and spin it. Quarter of a ways, getting better. Still wanting to spin slowly. I'll come back this way, 180. And it still wants to drop down on that side. So we'll add a little bit more. All right, so now we have a total of eight wheel weights. So these wheel weights are really light. So that's why I'm adding a few. So now we have a total of eight. We have four on this side and four on the other. Let's see how it works out. A Little bit better, might have to cut one in half. Spit it 180. All right, so now we have four wheel weights on this side, three on the other, so a total of seven wheel weights. I'll go ahead and try that. That's looking pretty good. And that's looking pretty good. Now, I can nitpick this, cut one in half and get it perfect where it won't move at all, but I'm pretty comfortable with this. This right here, you'd get this shipped out to you if you ordered a balanced tire. This would be shipped out to you ready to install. So I'll go ahead and get that sticky backing off and get those wheel weights on. Made in the USA, this new Kush Drive is injection molded, super high quality performance polyurethane. It's built to replace the stock standard rubber Kush Drive. The pocketed design provides a dual density progressive super flex. It's chemical proof, oil proof, and weather proof. You wanna line up these fingers with these fingers. It only goes on one way. I'll go ahead and reinstall the sprocket. So exactly how I did the front, I'm gonna change out the rear brake pads to the Z Plus brake pads. I'll pop the retaining clip out. You have your pin pad screw right here. 
So I'm using a five millimeter hex bit to get the pad pin out. Now the pad pin and the retaining clip, you always wanna replace those anytime you're servicing your brake pads. Go ahead and flip this over and I'll work these out. Now, even though these are new pads, you still wanna inspect them, make sure everything is good to go. So I'll get these in. Make sure it locks into place. And same thing with the rear, I'll use a new pad pin. Make sure you add a light coat of anti-seize. So the torque value on this brake pad pin is 75 to 102 inch pounds. Now it's time to put the rear tire back on. I'll go ahead and take this shock back off. If you get any anti-seize on your rotors, make sure you get that off, get them nice and clean. I'll get my wheel speed sensor. I'll clean this off and add some new anti-seize. Just make sure you inspect your bracket. Nothing's cracked, damaged. This is still there. Just make sure you reinstall your wheel speed sensor the same way. Go ahead and line this up. I'll apply some anti-seize to the axle. So now I'll get the rear axle in. Don't forget your spacer between the sprocket and the swing arm. I'll go to the other side just to make sure I get everything else lined up. I'll go ahead and tap the axle through. So on your axle, you have a flat side and you want that facing up. And on your adjuster cam, you also have a flat side, so that'll go up. Put on my axle nut. And once you get this torqued down, don't forget your E-clip. So I have my markings on my adjuster cam, so I'll rotate that on the other side. So once I torque this down, I'll check the belt tension if I need to back off, I'll back off. If I need to tighten it up more, I'll tighten it up more. So this is the Jim's USA third hand axle locking tool. It's gonna help hold this weld nut in place. I'll go ahead and torque it down on the other side. So in the axle cone nut, the first torque is gonna be 15 to 20 foot pounds. And the final torque is gonna be 135 to 145 foot pounds. So I have my adjuster cams lined up where they were before. I have my cone nut torqued down. I have my E-clip installed. Now before I check the belt deflection and I check the wheel alignment, I'll go ahead and throw on my brake caliper and my rear shocks. I'll install my two screws and I'm using blue Loctite. Now the torque value for the rear caliper screws is 43 to 48 foot pounds. Don't forget to remount your clip and guide your brake line cable along with your wheel speed sensor cable and then just lock it down. Then you have your other clip for your wheel speed sensor and your brake line. 
This helps it route it along here and keeps it away from the tire. So here I have the Russ Wearmont Designs RS1 shock. If you've seen my previous videos, you already know I'm a huge fan of these. Now before I install the rear shocks, I'll go ahead and inspect them, make sure all the hardware is there and everything is serviceable. So I'll be mounting these with the reservoir down. You have your black knob and your red knob. Now your red knob, I wouldn't adjust this. This is mainly for extreme riding or off-road racing. It comes preset already from factory in the wide open position. So I would just leave it as is. Now your black knob is for your everyday riding. It comes all the way to the left. It's your softest setting. And then from there, you can click it to the right and make your adjustments from there. So I'm gonna use the original stock bolts that came on the bike minus the washer. Make sure you clean your bolts off of any old thread locker. And you also wanna thread chase your holes. So I won't tighten this down all the way. I wanna make sure I get this all lined up with the swing arm. So the torque value for these shock bolts is 63 to 70 foot pounds. So you're just gonna repeat the same thing for the right side. Now that I have everything installed, I'm gonna check belt deflection. Here I'm using the Motion Pro belt tension gauge, but I can tell you right now that this belt is extremely tight. Now, even though I set the adjuster cams exactly where they were, it's because we went from 11 inch shocks to 13 inch shocks. So it's gonna spread that belt out a little bit more. I went ahead and adjusted my cam adjusters. I just dropped them down a little lower than what it was. I'll show you that entire process in a later video. Now, when you do this, you wanna throw your bike in a neutral, raise your bike up some, rotate the tire about three or four times, and you wanna check different positions on the belt. So the width of each mark is 1 16th, and between each mark is 1 8th. So I'm using the belt tension gauge from Motion Pro. Now you can set your O-ring at zero, or you can set it at the 10 pound mark. I just set it right here on the 10 pound mark, right on the line. Either way works. And I just take the belt gauge. I like to do it this way so I can see the actual belt. And then you're just gonna push straight up equal force until you reach that O-ring or that 10 pound mark. And then you have a window right here on your belt guard with indication marks on where your belt is sitting at. And now my belt deflection is good to go. Uh, you wanna check your service manual on what your belt deflection is supposed to be. It's gonna be different for a newer belt or an older belt past 1,000 miles. So here I'm using another tool from Motion Pro. This is the rear wheel alignment tool. I like to just double check and make sure everything is set properly. I pop this cap off. So you have your swing arm axle here, and then you have your rear wheel axle here. So I just use this tool. I just loosen this up. This slides over. You have your swing arm axle right here. I just stick this pointed end right dead center on that bolt. Then I take this adjuster. I'll slide it over, stick it inside the axle hole. Try to get it as center as possible and I'll tighten it down. So I'll take this measurement and then I'll just check the left side. So I'm comfortable with the alignment on here. So we balance the tire, the alignment's good and the belt deflection is good to go.